Alright, so welcome to another video. Uh, today I wanted to start looking at uh, gaming in general on Linux. Um, so one of the main uh, appealing draws to Linux, especially these days, is that you can run a lot of Windows software, including games, um, right in Linux itself. Um, and it runs, I mean some of them don't run that well, it just depends, but most of the, in most cases it, it will run uh, your software and your games and stuff. Uh, pretty, you know, pretty well. Pretty, it'll run your games and software pretty competently for the most part. Um, so, uh, for, so the first thing you want to do is install Wine onto your system um, on Linux if you have not done that. Um, the easiest way that I have found to do that is by visiting this website here called WineHQ. Um, I will have the links to this down in the description, uh, the video description for you. Uh, but when you get to the winehq.org website, um, you can see here, it just gives you a brief overview of what wine is and, and all that. Um, you can check that out on your own time if you'd like. But basically, it just allows you to run Windows software that's made just for Windows on Linux machines. Uh, so to start with the installation process, you go over here where it says download. And you go ahead and click that. Um, and it'll depend on which uh, version of Linux you're using. I am using Linux Mint myself, which is a derivative of Ubuntu. So I'll just go ahead and click there for my particular, uh, you know, version of Linux, the instructions for it. But if you have, you know, Debian or Fedora or whatever, um, and there's even instructions for installing Wine onto Mac computers, if you have that as well. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and click the Ubuntu ones here. And then it brings up this, um, you know, uh, packages and and these are just the step-by-step -step instructions that you'd go through to add the uh, wine functionality to your system and it's very easy to um, you know go through you literally just do like one step at a time here so um, so we'll start here with this preparation it says if your system is 64-bit which you know 99% of computers are going to be 64-bit anymore 32-bit <laughs> is pretty outdated it says enable 32-bit architecture if you haven't already uh, so unless you've gone through something like this to install wine or you've had some other really specific need for it you probably haven't normally added the architecture but um, so these are directions are just saying to be run in the terminal uh, so you can uh, use a keyboard shortcut control plus alt key and then while you're holding those down you press the T key on the keyboard and that will bring up a terminal window pretty easily or by default in mint you can click down here at the bottom and it says the terminal shortcut right there it's a little dark one uh, so I'll go ahead and click that to open the terminal window and now um, it'll just uh, give you these lines of code here so all you need to do is just select them with your mouse Right click, choose copy, or control C on your keyboard. Uh, now, I will note that when you're in the terminal, control C to copy and control V to paste, um, those keyboard shortcuts perform different functions in the terminal. It's one of the very few things I've ever come across that does not work with control C and control V for copy and paste. So what you're going to want to do instead is either use the menu up here, edit, and you can paste that way, or you can just right click where this blinking cursor is and you see there's a paste option there. So I'll go ahead and paste that first line in there and then you just hit enter in the terminal to run any kind of content that you've got going in here. And that's going to ask for your password this is your same password for uh, when you log into your computer and then after you enter your password and you hit enter then it just goes back to the blinking cursor so when you see it go back to this it just means whatever you did whatever you told it to do it's already done it and it's ready for your next input um, so we'll just go down here to the next box that says download and add the repository key um, so when it does it like this um, there's actually two lines of code here and you just want to run them one at a time. So just do the same thing, copy this first one over, bring it into the terminal, hit paste, and hit enter again. And then back to the prompt again, meaning okay, it already did what you know that step. And now we'll take this next one, copy all of it. Paste it in, hit enter again, 
And now this one, you can see it actually gave some information about what it was doing a little bit instead of just telling you, okay, I'm done. <laughs> so uh, it went ahead and did that step. So you literally just keep going through these steps one little section at a time. Uh, now here it says, add the repository. So please select your version and download the YNHK sources file. So you can see right here, on the left if you're using ubuntu as your operating system uh, for linux it's you know version 22 if you have version 22.04 uh, then you want to use this one if you have version 20.04 then you want to use this one if you have 18.04 and you want to use this so on and so forth um, and below that you can see here there's the linux mint uh, equivalents as well because it's also a really popular um, you know, operating system, a uh, really popular version of, of Linux. And so since it's also working under the same uh, principles as Ubuntu, it's it's telling you like, oh, okay, if you're on Linux Mint 20, then you want this one. Or if you're on Linux Mint 19, then you want this one. So uh, I happen to be on 21, so I'm gonna grab this first one here. And we just do the same thing. Copy this code, paste it in the terminal, hit enter to run it. And there we go, that step is done. And now it says update the package information. So we want to run this one. And you could type all this stuff out by hand. It's just easier to uh, use copy and paste just to make sure you don't make any typos or anything, or you know, as that would be pretty easy to have happen. And now it's just updating with all that information that you've uh, put in there. And this part takes a little bit. Okay, and then that step is done. And now to actually install the version of Wine, it says install one of the following packages. So uh, you have three different options here, stable, development, and staging. So uh, if you want to see the differences, it says the Wine HQ Wiki explains the differences between the branches. I personally always end up using the stable branch just because I want an experience that's going to work every time. <laughs> that's that's my goal is like be able to install this one time and not have to mess with it after that ideally. Um, so uh, so unless for some reason the stable version like caused issues or something where you would want to use either the development or staging. Um, I would say I would recommend just sticking with the stable branch. Um, that tends to work well, and because you know, as the name suggests, the stable means it's going to work and be stable, and you know, not cause you any additional headaches or anything. So, uh, so just go ahead and copy this one, and this will actually this will actually do the uh, you know the actual process of installing Wine itself. Hit enter and it says unable to locate the package wine HQ stable. So sometimes when that happens, um, it might be something to do with um, just that they don't have it quite set up right on their system or you know on, on their servers. Uh, so um, it might be a case where you would have to either like I said, either do one of the development or staging branches or else just um, come back and check another time if you have an issue like that and they may have fixed whatever it was. So. so for this particular error that I was seeing here that said, you know, unable to locate package YNHQ stable, um, if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll actually see there's a note here. It says Ubuntu 22.04 and Wine stable. It says there are no stable packages for this yet. It says it did not exist when Wine 7 was released. There will be stale packages whenever 7.01 comes out. So um, they might have some specific kind of notes here in this help section here. If you scroll down the rest of the way, uh, little things like that, where if you are getting errors where you can see, well, you know, uh, you know, maybe it's uh, it's giving you a no pub key error or, or whatever, um, then it may be addressed here and it shows you, you know, what you need to do to actually uh, you know deal with that so in this case I would have to since it's not out yet I'd have to use a different version besides stable so there's one example of why you may need to not use you know the stable branch etc so uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue even though that, that that little hiccup there but just to show you the rest of the process here um, once you get the uh, you know stable or whichever one you choose installed it will um, you know this is like the final step as far as getting wine installed at a basic level on your system. All right, so when you go through and you uh, choose the option that you wanted to install, whether it's stable or development or whatever, 
Um, when you run it, you'll sometimes see these prompts here. It says, do you want to continue Y or N? So all it's asking for is just your confirmation to make sure that you want to install everything that it's showing there. Um, and you just hit the Y key on your keyboard and press enter again, and it will continue. And if you want to back out of it, you can just hit the N key instead for no. And then it will actually download the package information. And when that's finished, uh, I will show you what it looks like when you actually go to try and run some software uh, that's only made to work in Windows on Linux using Wine. All right, so when that process fully completes, you can see down at the bottom here, we've got the uh, prompt again. Uh, that's how you know it's finished with whatever it was processing and installing and everything. And you should be good to go from there. So you can close the terminal. Now I have a copy of uh, More Distance Tale from uh, Laundry Bear Games. Um, this is their itch.io page uh, where you can get the game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try running this um, because it says you can see here it's a downloadable game for Windows and Mac OS. So uh, generally in Linux, when you're trying to run software with Wine, you want the Windows version. If there isn't, you know, if there was a, you know, uh, native Linux version that, that would work straight in Linux, obviously I would choose that. But, um, but when you come into situations like this, where it's like, well, which version do I get to try to run in Linux? You want the Windows version, the EXE, because that's what um, that Wine will be able to run more successfully. It's got a better chance of running that. So, um, so let's go ahead and take a look. Now here I have the actual file itself. Now when you install Wine, what it will do is if you right click, it'll, you can see right here it says open with Wine Windows Program Loader. Uh, so that will then become the default anytime you have a .exe file, which as Windows users will know, uh, that's short for executable. That's usually what you have when you need to run software or install software, whatever the case. Um, this is the format it very typically comes in as an exe file so um so if you even just double click on that in linux now that uh wine is installed it will know what to do with the exe file to run it through wine so we'll go ahead and do that and you can see here wine is there now when you do the first time you do run a software with wine you'll probably get this uh, the mono installer and there's also one for gecko that may or may not appear here um, basically what this is asking you is if you would like to install it yourself or if you would like Wine to automatically fetch it for you. Um, I always choose install for this because that makes it easier as far as I'm aware uh, to let Wine handle that process. Um, and then once it's installed Mono and Gecko, um, usually you won't see these prompts again until... Like it might be very rarely that one shows up, but most of the time it's a one and done kind of a thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click install here. It looks like this one didn't actually ask for the gecko one. So just the mono and we can see here the game is up and running despite being for Windows. And we've got the title screen, I can click on things, modify everything just fine like you would expect, change all the options. So basically it's running, uh, you know, about as well as you would expect it to on Windows, just like that. So even though this one didn't show Gecko, uh, you may in a different software as you as you run in, uh, you know, run in and install it or you know, things like that, it will uh, ask you just like it did with the mono. It'll look the same. It'll just say Gecko instead. You go through the process, and then you know that'll be that. Um, so in this case, it ran. You know, it ran the software just fine, even though it wasn't made for Linux. Um, and a lot of times that will be the case with Wine, and that that'll be all you have to do. And then you can pretty much use the software, you know, uh, pretty well, like you're accustomed to. You know, whatever you're used to in Windows, it it'll work in uh, in Linux most of the time. Um, there are some exceptions to that, and I'll go into those uh, more specific use cases in a future video. But I just wanted to show how to get started with that uh, with installing Wine. The process is pretty simple and straightforward on Wine HQ when you follow the directions there. 
and then that should at least get you started with certain uh, types of software and games that are you know normally just Windows exclusive um, and they can run just fine as you see even in Linux so all right, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video